He has shattered our dreams, just one of the harrowing victim impact statements. Read out today as New Zealand's first convicted slave master was sentenced to 11 years in prison. 66-year-old Samoan chief Joseph Onga Matsumata was found guilty in March of 10 charges of human trafficking and 13 charges of dealing in slaves. Our video journalist Logan Church was at the High Court in Napier and he filed this report. Matamata sat emotionless as the sentence was handed down. 11 years in prison, no minimum non-parole period. Crown Prosecutor Clayton Walker says the whole case has shed light on a grim reality of modern New Zealand. This trial has exposed the sad reality that human trafficking and slavery are not just overseas problems, but exist here in New Zealand. And the difficulty here, as elsewhere, is that these offences are hidden in plain sight. 13 people had come from Samoa between 1994 and April last year to work for Matamata, many under the assumption they could earn money here on his orchards to send home to their family. The court heard today that those people were poor and vulnerable. Most of the victims, all of whom have name suppression, are now back in Samoa. Their victim impact statements were read out in court today by Mr Walker. My whole family and a lot of people in my village knew that I was going to New Zealand and were just as excited as me for the opportunity that I had been given and what this opportunity would mean for us all. But when I got back I was totally ashamed and felt guilty that I didn't have anything to show for the time I had spent in New Zealand. He has shattered our dreams. Victims were forced to work long days sometimes up to 14 hours a day in his fields, sometimes by torchlight. Their movements were controlled as well as contacts with their families back home. All of this for no regular pay, only the hope that one day they and their families might see some money. Another victim spoke of the abuse suffered at the hands of Matamata. Often when I was getting hidings from Ong, I would cry and I would think of my parents back in Samoa. My parents wouldn't have treated us the same way. Some of the victims were deported. All bar three had come on three-month visitor visas that Matamata organised and paid for, but quickly became overstayers. One spoke of the ordeal and shame of being deported. He made me believe that I was on a work visa, but when the police located me at his home, they told me that I was an overstayer, and as a result I was deported back to Samoa through no fault of my own. In her sentencing remarks, Justice Helen Cull says Matamata abused the chiefly position of Matai, one that commands great respect in Samoan culture. While it may be part of the Samoan culture for people in certain circumstances to work unpaid for the collective benefit of the extended family, that was not the basis on which you offered the victims work in New Zealand, nor is it the basis on which they accepted your offer or what actually occurred. The facts remained that you abused your position of Matai and the trust that was placed in you by the victims and their families. Matamata also has to pay reparations of $183,000. Outside court, Immigration New Zealand Stephen Vaughan welcomed the sentence. The police and immigration spent three years investigating this case. I asked Mr Vaughan why it took authorities more than two decades to catch him. Well, it would have been good to have identified Mr Matamata's offending earlier. As I say, his manipulation of the victims and the workers that he had working for him was such that it was very, very difficult for us to identify it. Meanwhile, Detective Inspector Mike Foster says the police don't know of any other slave operations in New Zealand. We're not aware, um, we the police aren't aware of uh, any further offending, but we would urge um, any victims to come forward uh, and speak with either immigration or police if if they're going through any of this type of offending. Defence lawyer Roger Phillips says Matamata is disappointed about today's sentencing. A decision as to whether he will appeal is yet to be made. And Napier for Checkpoint, Logan Church.